Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Well, during the first lockdown, Abigail Denniston and Audrey Gleeson found love. But with a shared passion for design and Irish humour, a new greeting card business, Weird Watercolours, was born. Abigail joins us now to tell us their fascinating story and to discuss the growth which their business has enjoyed over the past two years. Abigail, start by providing us with an insight into your backgrounds. Sure. So Audrey was a design student and I myself did an undergrad in in UCC in History of Art and was most recently employed as a photographer in the States. We've always kind of been busy making our own work before and aside from the business. So yeah, we share interest in doing artistic things. So when did you come back from the US and why was that? I came back for a home visit and then two days later lockdown happened in March 2020. So uh, the two of us ended up stuck in lockdown together. Our in-joke is that she went on one date and never went home. We knew each other from seven years ago and um, had lost contact up until then. So we went on one date and lockdown happened and we decided to stay together. And yeah, that's when the kind of business was born. Weird Watercolours is a story of love and creativity as a result. It sure is. So maybe provide us with a little bit more insight into that. So you moved in together after the first date. What happened next? So we were stuck in lockdown, twiddling our thumbs. Neither of us are ones to sit still at any moment. A lot more people were interacting on social media as everyone was stuck in lockdown. So we were kind of racking our brains. And I fancy fancy myself a bit of a comedian. So I was doing funny videos on Instagram and then the two of us were sitting around one evening and I was just like, why don't we do some live drawing? We set the phone up and turned the live button on and as we started drawing, people started tuning in. And then we were just like, why don't we actually draw people's requests? So then that kind of snowballed and people were sending in this, that and the other, like draw David Attenborough, draw Kevin from Home Alone, draw a hippopotamus. And yeah, we did that a, a couple of a couple of weeks in a row. As people knew that it was happening, they would be more inclined to join in. And after the videos, then we would free auction off whatever work was done in the session of requests for doodles. And as I think uh, everyone was kind of on the same level of, you know, being away from their loved ones and kind of wanting to make someone's day. So, yeah, we ended up sending them out to people. From there, then, I think what happened next was that your followers started asking you to commission specific work for them. Yes, yes, that's true. So about two to three weeks after we started doing the Insta Live and people kind of knew that we would be live at a certain time in the evening or whatever, we'd publish it all on our stories. So, you know, next up, you know, we'll be doodling at this time. Yes. So shortly after that, people were like, when's the next doodle session and where can I buy one of these? Because every one of the doodles that were done were snapped up almost immediately. We would put them on our stories and, as I said, we'd post them out to people for free. So they were disappearing at the drop of a hat. And then eventually we started getting messages through Instagram requesting paid commissions, for example, pet portraits, people portraits, you name it. I think we got requests for... And then the next iteration for this organic business as it was growing was actually to get into developing greeting cards. Yes, that was, uh, I think, very naturally the next step. We were thinking of how to commodify and kind of make work for ourselves and how to digitise the watercolour sketches. And our first collection of greeting cards was, we kind of themed it around kitchen, the kitchen and food and making and building puns around them. So we we would brainstorm late into the night and, you know, um, we like to think that, you know, we incorporate a decent bit of Irish humour to keep it keep it local, as you will. But I think um, our work is also heavily inspired by contemporary meme culture as well. And I think that was really initially to appeal to a younger generation of people for sending greeting cards. Now, of course, the greeting card market is notoriously competitive. There's others in this space doing similar work in terms of the puns. So how have you managed to stand out from the crowd? I honestly think the medium that we use, they are sketched, painted. They're, not, they're mass produced in a way, but they are all they all originate from organic work. So I think that's uh, one one important aspect. And another is 
I'd say just the sense of humour and um, I guess the the sellability of nostalgia. I mean, in English, Irish or Irish English, there's a lots of ways to say one thing. And uh, I guess keeping it current is also quite important. So how would you characterise the style of the greeting cards themselves? That's a tough one. I would say contemporary, but inspired by a traditional medium. And when did you realise that there was a viable business opportunity within these greeting card designs? We actually started on Etsy and we were getting lots and lots of orders and then we kind of wanted to branch out and make a bigger shop and Audrey's, Audrey's the technician behind it, I'm, I'm the doodler. Um, but like she went and did a load of research what other platforms we could use um, and we opened a Shopify shop and then from there we started using advertising through Instagram and Facebook and social media to gain more followers and grow from there. And just on the topic of networks, have you considered yeah. using Amazon and eBay and other platforms like that? No, we haven't yet. I think, I think platforms like that, regretfully, I think they dilute a brand. But Showcase Ireland is on the cards for next year. So we do supply to various retail outlets around the country and one in the States. So really part of your growth strategy is to actually have these greeting cards stocked in retailers all over the world? Exactly. I mean, it's a, very, it's a really, really competitive area. So And there's lots of every greeting card. Um, but I guess to have a brand that appeals, you know, globally, not just in Ireland, is the ultimate dream. You've been successful in selling tens of thousands of greeting cards to date. So as the orders started to flow in, how did you scale up both in terms of design and production? And what challenges did it pose for you? Challenges it posed were Brexit. Brexit was a huge challenge. And the importation of some of our, our raw materials But apart from that, uh, other challenges were the fact that we live together and work together and we are both fiery personalities. Um, But also starting a business isn't easy and nobody's going to tell you that it is. So I guess you're for um, most of the time you're learning on your feet, certainly for the first two years. And then the, the most rewarding thing out of those challenges is learning to perfect what you could have done better, even if it was just the previous week. You know. And Abigail, as you say, you're living and working together. The business is a home-based business. So how do you manage that? What have you learned from that experience? To take proper breaks, definitely, certainly for us anyway, to try and abide by business hours. Because you could end up just being on your phone all evening, eating into your actual free time. And to, and to keep the passion alive for what you do, I think is really, really, really important because I don't want to be, you know, an employee to my job. I want to be the entrepreneur, the creator. You know, I want to be, I want to be everything. So I, de- I guess keeping the passion for what you do. And Abigail, as you look to expand internationally, have you any concern that your car designs could be copied? And have you taken any steps today to protect those designs? We have actually written up and trademarked some of our products. And we've actually taken measures to make sure that, for example, the calendar, the calendar that we released, calendar that we released before Christmas would not be copied as it's, as it's a valuable, as it's a valuable entity for us anyway. And are you finding that you're learning much from the information that you're collecting from reports within your own activity within Instagram? And then for that to educate you in terms of who you're marketing to? 100% that may influence a, a new design coming up, but that may influence when we release a new product. I think that's all in the front of our minds, who we're selling to. And being in the mind of a customer as well, from having worked in the service industry and front of house, in, I think you always have to be in the mind of the consumer as a person who sells. Now you've already mentioned that you're looking forward to showcasing at Showcase in the RDS. Yeah. But apart from that, how else are you focusing on growing the business over the coming years? We have predominantly an Irish market at the moment. I think we have to, to change our design style to be a little bit more cross-the-board appealing. 
I know that a lot of our cards have very Irish sayings, but I know that a lot of our cards have also sold in places like Canada, Australia, the UK, because they are based on and taken from contemporary meme culture, which is kind of very reproducible. But I guess a new direction we would have to take to appeal more is to kind of tap in to possible different cultural aspects from anywhere that we were trying to target. So change in our designs would be target specific in the future. And Abigail, finally, of course, we're hearing lots about NFTs, non-fungible tokens in the context of art. In your belief, do they play a role in relation to what you're doing in weird watercolours? There's a potential for something to become valuable. And I had, had had a long talk just recently about what they mean and what they are and how you can commodify something. But as trends change and as you know, even a small business grows in popularity down the road, it could be it could be very valuable to us to start creating them. But then again, I personally don't know enough about them to make that move just yet. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Abigail Denniston from Weird Watercolours. And we would like to wish Abigail and Audrey continued success with their business. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.